Hey everyone, it's Sky here, and welcome to part two of our Halloween color along. So I assume that you've already watched part one. If not, feel free to go back and check that out. We started working on Sweet Scarecrow, which is the one that won um, the vote. So this is the one that we're coloring this month. Super excited. We've already got her hair done. We've got her overalls done. I've got some crazy ideas. Hopefully you guys are going to be on board for them because I think think, fingers crossed, that it's going to turn out pretty cool and super Halloween looking. Um, so without giving away any spoilers, like I said, it's going to be a little bit outside the box, which I'm kind of fighting with myself on whether I wanted to do it or not. And then I was thinking, you know what, if I want to color a normal one, normal, there's always the second image in the book. So I'm going to go all out and Halloween this one up just because it is such a cute image and I kind of want to make it a little bit spooky or at least somewhat Halloween themed so I've got a few ideas and you guys will see when we get to them because I'm going to be hush hush for once about my plans for this. So without further ado let's dive in. Thinking we're going to tackle some of these yellows. We're going to start with the sunflower peeking in back from there. And I've got a whole bunch of yellows kind of laid out, not quite sure which ones we're going to end up using. I want to do the sunflowers and the hay. I'm going to leave the corn for now. So I think I kind of want our sunflowers to be a little bit of like a golden color. So I'm going to come in with a golden rod. I'm just going to pop a little bit of this in the center and kind of behind some of these petals. I don't want too much yet. I'm going to kind of build up the colors as I go because, as always, I'm kind of winging it. So I don't want to put too much down and then kind of regret it later on. So there's our golden rod. I think from there I want to grab the sunburst yellow. I'm just going to kind of pop that over top and fade it out a little bit. Never even bothered looking at what the inside of these look like. Looks like they're kind of like a brownish color. So we're pro well, actually, I think I might actually have the colors to do that. I mean, of course I have the colors to do that, but I think I actually have the colors out to do that. I just realized I missed that little piece back there. No, I think I'm going to leave that and I'm going to color that in as the grass behind it. And actually that one probably should have been the grass behind it as well, but oh well. We'll have some petals and then the grass kind of peeking through, I think. Let me guess, you want outside now? Oh, no, you're going to use the bathroom. Okay. Okay, and I think after that... I don't want them to be super bright, so I think after that I'm going to go in with the canary yellow. Which is still bright, but um, not as bright as like the neon yellow or like the lemon yellow. This kind of fades or blends in a little bit more than I was hoping for, so I think we'll go back in with. Let's go in with a little bit of the Spanish orange. Maybe that'll kind of help. A little bit more contrast. I don't want these looking too blocky like they kind of do now. Okay, I like that. So then I'm going to come in with the bronze. I'm going to just lightly color in this whole section of the sunflower in. And rather than just looking at a colored image, I'm actually going to pull up an image of a sunflower so I can kind of 
get the realistic look of it. Oops, no, I don't want to play them, I just want pictures. Meow. Okay, it looks like they're kind of... darker on the outside, some seem kind of darker on the inside. I think I like the ones that look darker on the outside though, so I'm going to go with that. So hopefully I can do this with just the two colors that I kind of have here. So I'm going to start off with the dark brown. Pop some of that color in, and I don't think this is going to be dark enough, so I'll have to grab another color. But I think the color I want, I already, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera there. I already have the swatch for. There's two of them. We'll bring in the dark umber and the black. So I think instead of a dark brown, we're going to stick to the dark umber and black for this. Starting off with the black, I'm going to pop this in kind of on the outside of this circle here. that out and then we're going to switch to the dark umber. Kind of finish coloring that in. It might help if I sharpen this a little bit. And the sunflower that I'm kind of looking at is a little bit darker in the center again too. So. I'm going to pop a little bit of this in the center. Throw a little bit of the black just kind of around it. And then I think I'm going to use a mix of the dark brown and the bronze for the rest. So I'm just going to start in with the dark brown. I'm going to lightly pop that in just to get some color in there and then I'm going to grab the bronze and we're just going to burnish this part with that. Okay, I like that. pen and a black fine liner. And I'm going to throw in a bunch more little dots. Just kind of want to see what it's going to look like. So I'm going to go too crazy with the white. But I do want to add just some spots here and there. Maybe some little bits on the leaves or petals. Not leaves. Okay, I like that. pencils out of the way now that I know what we're using. And then we can tackle this one. So I'm going to pretty much do the same thing here. I'm going to start off with the goldenrod. 
up a little bit of this in. I'm going to kind of stick it to one side though, I think. I've got a little bit more room to work on this one so we can add a little bit extra detail. And then from there, I'm going to switch to the Spanish orange. So I really liked having that color in there. Don't want to add too much of it. I'm going to kind of keep it to the side that has the goldenrod. It'll pop a little bit in on the other side as well. Then I want a little bit of the sunburst yellow. I'm gonna make sure we're leaving enough room for our canary yellow. Actually, I think for this one, I don't think I'm going to use the canary yellow on this one. Let's make this one a little bit brighter, just because it's kind of closer to us. So I think I'm going to skip the canary yellow there, and I'm going to go in with, let's go in with the lemon yellow. There we go, but we will do the same thing for the inside of the flowers. I'm going to grab the black, same thing as before, and kind of follow the outline of this circle. Start off really dark and then fade it out. And then the same thing here, just going to kind of add a little bit of a wonky shape here with the black. Kind of fade it both ways. And we can grab the dark umber.
So I'm kind of fading out a little bit to the edges with the dark umber. I'm not completely burnishing it. I'm just going to leave some little bits of white poking through, I think. This center bit, however, though, I'm going to color that in completely. do the same thing here, slightly different though since we have a little bit more room. I'm going to come in with the dark brown from that black and I'm going to kind of fade it out and just really lightly go over the edges and we'll kind of come in with the bronze I think just to create a kind of lighter ring before this really dark part of it. And then we can switch to our bronze and color that in. We did the same thing with our fine liner and Posca pen. if you don't have either of those, a sharpie would work, black acrylic paint would work, if you have a Uniball Signal pen or um, Sakura Jelly Roll, those would work. A little bit of a shine on some of these petals, just like the other one. It's not super noticeable. These petals are already pretty light, but I think it looks pretty good. So then we've only got one more sunflower to go. And I said last time I think this was hay, but then I realized that it kind of comes up past it and this is her arm here, so it's actually grass. Which would be nice having that green in to kind of, if this was hay it would be too much yellow I think, so it's nice to have those other colors in there. I'm not sure what this little bit here is supposed to be though. I think I'm just going to color that in as grass. So we'll come in with the goldenrod. We don't have a whole lot of room to work with on this one. It's pretty small just like the other one. Just gonna pop this in here and there. I'm gonna throw the Spanish orange in. And then the canary yellow. And then the same thing for the center of our little sunflower here. This is 
starting with the black outline in the outside of this inner circle. And then I'm also going to create just kind of this odd shaped little bit here. I'm just going to color this in pretty much completely with the black. I'll go over it with the dark umber though, which is our next color. And then we'll lightly go over it with the dark brown. And burnish with the bronze. A few extra little dots in here with our black fine liner. little white ones with the Posca pen. I'm just going to quickly write these colors down while we're waiting for that to dry. Actually, a lot of colors for those little sunflowers. Okay, next I think I want to do the hay. Which I'm thinking we'll start off with the bronze. Um, don't want to kind of go over this one sunflower here, so let's start down here with the hay. Let's just add a little bit of bronze coming out of here. I didn't want the hay to be super yellowy. So I want bronze to be in the shadow. And we can also do this little bits here. I want a little bit of the goldenrod, not too much. I'm basically just going to use that over top of the bronze to create kind of more of like an orangey tone rather than brown. And then I want the... Maybe not so bright. Let's go canary yellow. and blend it all together. There's actually not too much hay. We'll do 
the same for all this hay up here. This looks a little bit tinier, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful for the small spots. I'm just kind of concentrating the bronze in at the bottom. So that's where the shadow would be for the most part. And then we'll come in with the golden rod, kind of come over that bronze with that. And then lastly, the canary yellow. It could be hay or straw. It's kind of the same, a little bit different. But I think scarecrows are usually stuffed with straw. Okay. So I think the last yellow thing we've got on here, oh actually let's do this button. And I think I'm going to do that kind of with the same colors as the, uh, um, the hay. Yeah, I think it's just all over my fingers. I think I want to add a little bit of the dark umber to it. Following where we put the shadows, I'm going to throw some dark umber in on the right and bottom side. Then I'm going to come in with the bronze. And go in over top of that dark umber and bring this up. chick here. So let's go in with, actually let's go in with the bronze for the shadows on her, or him. A little bit of a shadow in around his mouth, because I imagine his little beak would kind of be nestled into his feathers there. pretty young so I'd imagine it'd probably be like downy feathers rather than actual feathers. He'd be pretty fluffy. Maybe kind of outline some of these lines a little bit with the bronze. There's that, and then we'll come out with the golden rod. I'm going to use this over top of the bronze to orange it up a little bit.
Okay, and then I'm actually going to go in with the canary yellow. I'm going to pop this over top to and bring it out slightly. Throw in a little bit on his beak here too. Throw some deco yellow in there. And then just on his head where it's going to be the lightest, we'll put a little bit of cream. So my camera cut out as I was coloring this little guy's head. Um, you guys didn't miss much. I just used the cream to kind of finish in, finish coloring in what was left white, which is mostly just his little head here. And then I colored in just kind of over top of our second lightest color and used the cream to blend everything in together. And then I did take a little bit of the dark brown and just put a little bit in just on the ridge of his beak here and this part of his beak just to give it a little bit of definition because it was kind of blending into his body and I didn't quite want that. So next we're going to tackle the grass and see so we can't really see much here but Try and get a little bit anyway. So I'm going to start off with the kelp green. I'm going to pop a little bit of it on this little bit of grass here. Pretty much just going to color this in lightly. Not completely colored in yet, but same with this part and this part. Maybe a little bit at the bottom there. Okay, and then for this top bit, I'm going to switch to the lime peel. I'm going to go over top of the kelp green with that. I'm going to bring it up and fade it out. And then I'm going to finish coloring that in with the pale sage, and I'm just going to go over everything with that. Blend it all together. And for those other little bits, I'm going to grab the dark umber and really lightly go over this part here and then kind of a medium pressure go over these bits because I want them to be a really muted kind of dark green. So then we're going to go back in with our kelp green and we're going to finish coloring those in. reference picture here. Two seconds, sorry. I did have it pulled up and then it got closed. There we are. Okay, 
Okay, so I just want to pick out the shadows here where I think it's going to be the most shadowy. So I'm going to kind of color in this area with the dark umber. Um, this one here, maybe behind here as well. And maybe this spot here too. So then I'm just going to lightly go over those just to kind of darken up the color a little bit without burnishing the paper, um, especially at the bottoms. And then from there, I'm just going to lightly go in some of these other areas just to create a little bit of a shadow. Okay, I like that. So then we'll come in with our kelp green. So I'm going to go over the dark umber with this, bring it out a little bit, and then fade it out. And I know this might seem like an odd choice. I was originally planning on doing some like bright really pretty green leaves rather than these kind of like neutral earthy toned ones but there is a method to my madness um, those little bits and bobs I was talking about earlier that are going to be a little bit more Halloween inspired I want those to really pop so in order to do that I kind of want to make Everything else a little bit bland. There you go. Sorry, so I get a little mess set up with some stuff. I can't remember what I was saying, if I was saying anything. I'm just going to switch back to the dark umber here for just a second. Don't want to forget about these little bits poking out of her pocket there. And then in with the kelp green just to kind of neutralize that a little bit. So next we're going to come in with the lime peel. Still going to kind of go over all of that, fade it up a little bit, make sure to leave a little bit of a highlight. I'm going to sharpen that and hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to use. I 
I'm really, really excited about this now. To be honest, this wasn't the one that I was hoping would win. Um, there was a few that I was really excited to color about. This one I wanted to color, but it definitely wasn't high on my list to color. And I'm not going to say that I was bummed out that this one won, because I'm definitely not. I'm still excited to color it. But I just, I wasn't sure what to do with it. I wasn't sure how I was going to color it. And sometimes it takes me a little bit to get excited about a page, once I, even once I've started it. But once I get to that point where I know what I'm going to do with it, and I know what my game plan is, then I get super excited. And now that I know what I'm going to do with this one, I'm just, I'm so stoked to see how it's going to turn out. And uh, I should have mentioned in the first part, just in case you guys were wondering, um, this is Sweet Scarecrow here, so it won by 23. So this one won by a long shot. In second place was the pumpkin pie one with only 15 votes. So you guys really wanted this picture. Hopefully I'm going to color it in a way that you guys all like. And as always, definitely feel free to make changes here and there. I love seeing um, the closely replicated pictures, I love when you guys follow along completely or when you guys change it up. Either way, it's just super cool to see. So always tag me so I can see and compliment you guys on your amazing coloring. I actually really like this color combination. I think this one is going to go in my book. So then I'm going to come in with the Pale Sage. I'm going to bring this in on the highlights and kind of in over top of the lime peel as well. And my reason for doing this is because there's a little bit of yellow to the lime peel, but I don't want it to take away from the yellow in the sunflowers. So this is going to kind of knock that yellow back a little bit. The more I color this, the more I am just absolutely loving it. And totally forgot about this part again. <laughs> okay, um, nope, that's not lime peel. So a little bit of lime peel in there, and then a little bit of the pale sage. Okay, so then we can come up this way. We'll go back in with our dark umber. We're going to pop some of that in on these uh, leaves here. I'll lightly color in this area and this one here. Make it a little bit darker. Don't want the tips to be too dark, so I don't want to put in too much of the dark umber, just little bits. So then we'll switch to the kelp green. I'm going to color in those little areas that I colored in here. So that one and this one here, because I'm not really sure what that is, so I'm just going to Color it dark, kind of gets rid of it a little bit, makes it just shadow. So add the kelp green over top of our dark umber. We'll bring it up a little bit. Then we'll go in with our lime peel, 
Same thing, kind of pulling that in over top of all of our shadowed colors. Bringing it out a little bit and making sure to save a little bit of space for our pale sage. And finally, just the pale sage over pretty much everything. I may have overestimated how long this is going to take to, but I guess we'll see. I know in the last part we made it a little bit longer, but I think for this part and possibly the next one, we'll probably keep it at about an hour, see how that goes. We should be able to finish it. It just doesn't seem like we have a whole lot left. Okay, and with the kelp green, I'm just going to color in that little spot down there. So I'm going to use the kelp green over top of the dark umber. I'm going to try to use it a little bit sparingly, although I do want this bottom part to be quite a bit darker than the top. I still want to have our highlights in there a little bit, at least on some of the blades of grass. Just helps add that interest in there that we kind of need. And then we're going to come in with our lime peel. And just wherever we can, we'll try and save a little bit of a highlight for our pill sage. And then we'll come in with that pale sage, pop that in there, kind of blend it in, and then that will be it for our grass. I am loving that. So let's just quickly write that down. I'm just a little uncertain about. Just 
not quite sure. Like her clothes, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with that. Like the rest of her clothes, her shirt. I know that her arm and stuff, we're gonna have kind of like burlap color, same with the hat. I'm not quite sure what to do with her face. I don't know whether I, wa whether I want to do her face in the burlap color or do her skin kind of like normal color. I'm just not sure. I think what we possibly could do is add some stitching to her face, maybe kind of coming in sideways from here. Almost kind of like a yin yang shape. I think we might do that. Grab some colors and we'll be right back. Okay. So I think we're just going to tackle her glove for now. Let's come in with some black. We'll add some shading. Of course, I didn't test out any of these colors together, not quite sure how it's going to turn out. I still always advise testing your colors before putting them down on the page, even though I never do. Sometimes it bites me in the butt, so I always should, I just never take the time to. I have a feeling that this color that I'm going for is going to be a little bit tricky to achieve, so definitely might come back to haunt me. So just adding really light layers. I want to kind of build up right under this um, little tie thing she has on her glove. Oh, it's this side of her glove as well. It doesn't quite match with all of our other shadows. Technically, I think this side and this side should have been in shadow, but oh well. As long as we got shadows on there. Just because I've been kind of basing all my lighting off of the moon, so yeah, this part right here would have been light. This would have still been in shadow, this would have been in shadow, and this part would have been in shadow. Not that it's a huge deal. So there is that. So I'm going to come in with the dark umber next. I'm going to place this in over top of the black. I'm just going to start off lightly for now. I'm not going to bring it out any further. I'm just going to go in over top of the black lightly and fade it out up to where I had faded out with the black as well.
Okay, I'm liking that. Let's come in with got two colors here. I've got the bronze and the sandbar brown. The sandbar brown is actually a little bit darker than the bronze, so let's come in with that one first. Same thing, I'm going to touch this in over top of those shadows and kind of just bring it out slightly. I don't want too much of this because I do kind of want that tanned kind of look, and this is more of like a brown kind of look, so I more just want to use this to lighten up those shadow colors a little bit, I think. Add a little bit of warmth to them. Come in with the bronze. Going in over top of those shadows, bringing it out a ways and fading it out. I want to leave some highlights. And then I'm also just going to really lightly go over those highlights as well. A little bit of a highlight there if we can. Little one here and also here, so just kind of like along these bits. And then we'll come in with the 30% French gray, this is the one that I use very often. I'm just going to use that to kind of go over everything. burnished. I'm not too worried about burnishing it, uh, just for the simple fact that I want it to kind of have that texture as well, kind of like the jeans, because it's kind of like that burlap kind of look, I think, is what it's called. I do want to come back in with the dark umber. I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow to these little scuff marks on her gloves here, make those pop out a little bit more because I really like those. Maybe elongate some of them a little bit. Okay. And I think that is where we're going to leave it for now, because I um, got my fingers crossed that we should have more than enough time to finish everything in the next two parts. And even though we have like probably like four or five more minutes, I don't really think there's anything that I want to really start coloring. We won't be able to really finish any of this in four or five minutes, so we're going to leave that there. And this is how she's turning out. I am super excited and already super happy with her. I can't wait to see her finished. I hope you guys feel the same. As always, take care, and I hope to see you guys in part three. Bye!